Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. PTI has also submitted a resolution, resolution against uh, the deputy chairman in the Senate. Pers following all that has been happening as far as the chairman Senate is concerned, the move by the government to de-seat the chairman Senate. What will follow through? How will this pan out as for, as for the opposition and for the government? Let's talk about all of that. Let's talk about the nitty gritties of what this means for the government and for the opposition. We'll also be talking about Arshad, uh, Judge Ashad Malik's affidavit and all the issues that that raises after this, uh, making this case, if not anything else, at least very, very controversial. I have with me Shafiq Ahmed Saab, who's a senior journalist. Thank you for joining us today. Taveed Jadun Saab, who's a senior journalist. Thank you for being with us today. And Zaid Ghushkori Saab, who's a senior analyst and journalist. Thank you for joining us. Shafiq Saab, like I said, of course, it's a huge issue um, as far as the Senate is concerned. The move by the government, is, uh, by the opposition, is, has now been followed by the government. How do you see this? Do you think that the government will be able to get the kind of numbers that they're hoping to get? Uh, of course, they have a lot more leeway than the opposition. And yes. and what about the opposition? There, there, there seems to be a joint front. There were issues about who to nominate. That seems to have been settled. What do you see? I mean, what we were discussing before in the program, right. like this was the decision was taken in the all parties conference right. of the opposition parties convened by Manana Fadlur Rahman. The decision was taken that to mobilize the people right. and also uh, change the Senate chairman. Right. So this is one of the political move, and uh, the I mean, as for the number game is concerned, they have 65 Senate members, uh, the opposition and the Treasury benches. Uh, they have uh, 37 members. Right. So it's a it's big a gap between gap. the uh, opposition uh, uh, parties and the government. And even if the government loses, let's say, you know, some of some of its members, it's still a huge gap to. Sort of, of course, right. but you know, uh, what we have seen, like there are some activities seen uh, from the government side, like uh, they have appointed one person, Shibli Faraz, who is meeting people, right. and he is trying to not uh, uh, deceit the chairman of Senate, and he, he can play a role as a power broker. So let's see, as for the number is concerned, apparently it seems to be that opposition is in, the, uh, in a good position to replace uh, Sinjrani Sahab with If that doesn't happen, of course, it can backfire for the government in a very bad way. Isn't that true? Yes. If for the, the opposition, sorry. Of course for it will. For the opposition, it, because it's a power show, is it not? For them it is to, definitely to... a power show. Right. And what is my understanding that it will, uh, like already we believe that there is some uh, trust deficit among different uh, opposition party and one of the opposition party, there are also... Uh, uh, there is also a problem within the leadership like PMLN, they have the problem. So, I mean, if uh, opposition failed to de-seat Chairman Senate, it, I mean, it will be further damage the opposition uh, position, like opposition uh, will lose the confidence of the people. Like we were expecting that opposition should play a very important role, but definitely this team uh, will be gone, by the way. So, so and in case like if opposition wins, and they uh, succeed in replacing Sinjrani Sahab. Right. So it will be a little bit uh, the uh, a plus point for the opposition parties because we say that they are not united. And if they succeeded, then it will be like a sim symbol of their uh, the unity, unity their, and it their will, power as an course, opposition. Of course, of course, of course. So it and will, they, they will emerge as a more effective opposition. Exactly, exactly. So I believe that. Uh, then the government will be on a backseat a little bit, though nothing will happen like replacing. It will be like a symbolic uh, political activity and it will be like a symbol a of unity. But it's a battle that the opposition, now that they've, they've rallied f for it, should win at, at any cost. But it depends, you know. We don't know that who is going to be absent on the day of, like, right. uh, on vote. And there will be secret balloting. Secret balloting means that anybody can vote to... Uh, on the other, um, side. Uh, other side, so no one knows. So it will be still. Javed, do you agree? Do you think that that the gov the opposition can sail through with this? Uh, thank you very uh, very much, Maruk. I think uh, first of all we need to understand whether the move is aimed at strengthening the democratic process right. or democracy in Pakistan, or just to score uh, some kind of a point that uh, they have the numbers game and they can win uh, that numbers game in Senate and embarrass the government. 
I think that's the only reason because the top leadership of the two main opposition parties is behind the bars. And at this particular moment, they have no other al alternatives except to put pressure on the government and uh, to some extent uh, what they say the establishment as well. Secondly, uh, if opposition wins, which, uh, uh, which is definitely a possibility, uh, I don't think it's going to embarrass the government because uh, numbers game, we all know it is in favor of opposition parties, combined opposition parties. But if they lose, the opposition lose, I think that, that, that definitely is going to embarrass the opposition and is going to dent their credibility and uh, in future, uh, their credentials as a cohesive and a combined opposition will be seriously damaged. Do you Secondly, think that they can? Uh, do you think that it's possible that uh, there is a, you know, as far as the opposition is concerned, they can uh, have, get, of course the numbers are in their favor, but do you think the opposition as a whole has that kind of unity? Like you said, you know, there, there are fragments within them. There is some, <coughs> you know, we saw some, some division earlier on also. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I think there are fissures uh, among the political parties. The, the two, take the example of two main uh, opposition political parties, PPP and PMLN. They have definitely have a trust deficit among themselves. But do you think it like, can have an impact on the accountability process? It can? I don't think so. Give that uh, kind of pressure? In fact, uh, Maruch, uh, I believe that this is going to strengthen the resolve of the government to continue with the accountability process. Because putting pressure on the judiciary and the government is uh, definitely counterproductive. And the issue of, uh, the of uh, I think this issue of uh, judge, uh, which we were discussing, is definitely uh, deeply linked with the whole scenario. Uh, How so? This, this particular, at this particular the juncture, of it? Uh, exactly, the timing. Uh, I think timing is very, very important. Uh, leaking the videos and then again, a couple of more videos and audios is definitely aimed at putting pressure on the judiciary and the government as well. Uh, but in my personal opinion, uh, the Islamabad High Court's decision to remove the judge is a bit premature because uh, no forensic, uh, forensic examination has been done so far. I think the court should have waited for the uh, forensic examination. And if uh, something comes up concrete, uh, they should have taken not only one decision of removing the judge. In fact, they should have uh, revisited the case as well. Let's go uh, and discuss that in just a moment. I want to, you know, talk about uh, the Senate elections first. Senate election, coming back to the Senate elections. Uh, as I think we all know that uh, the, the numbers game, game is in opposition's favor and uh, anything can go wrong as far as opposition's calculation is concerned Even because they lose out this is going to be the secret and ballot. Right. And in this, I think in this particular political milieu, it would be extremely difficult, uh, this is what I believe, extremely difficult for the opposition to dislodge the Senate chairman, uh, despite the fact that they have got numbers game in their favor. Uh, I think there are many uh, sane elements among the opposition parties. And Maruch, even nomination of Asal Bizenjo is uh, primarily a kind of a message that uh, a gentleman from uh, Balochistan is being removed as a Senate chairman, mm -hmm. and another gentleman mm -hmm. from okay. the same promise is being nominated. But I think people of Pakistan and uh, those who matter, they definitely know uh, that uh, dislodging the Senate chairman is not because Senate chairman has not been able to conduct the business of the House, but in fact, it is uh, the point they are trying to score that they have got numbers game in their favor and they can right. they can put pressure on, on the government to pressure and the maybe government. and maybe they are a, they are aiming to have some kind of concessions from the government which government i believe is not going to give them right Geez, that's up. Do you agree? Do you think that it will have no impact on uh, the process of accountability on on putting pressure on the government if that is indeed the target here? Uh, Maruk, uh, uh, thank you. And uh, of course, opposition political parties uh, seem to be dominating uh, in the whole scenario in coming uh, days. I'm sure because the number game, you know, that uh, is very, very less uh, by the supporting government uh, political parties like uh, only four parties. The Mangal uh, group has one senator only, and then the Balochistan Party has two senators, and the Pakistan Tehreek and South, the ruling party, has 14 numbers. and the five numbers for MQM. So of course, uh, these are 13 political parties representing the Senate of Pakistan. All other uh, are with the opposition. And of course, uh, as uh, my colleague said, that it's only a change of face at the chair. But symbolically, it's very important for the opposition political parties. 
uh, government uh, would try, but uh, I, I'm not sure even, even um, I, I can say that, uh, claim even that uh, the opposition would uh, uh, get success story from the Senate. They would get their own men uh, in the upper house. But uh, like David uh, was saying, do you think that it, the, 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 the videos and, and their time and, and the, the fact that their timing at this point coming out, what kind of bearing can they have on, on uh, the Senate elections? You, Maybe increase the pressure? Uh, it could be. You know that uh, opposition political parties are trying to piling up uh, uh, on the government. But the most important thing, the people of Pakistan, does it make sense for them? Uh, would this change bring any change for them? No, I don't think so because the government cannot come up with the very strong uh, sort of uh, legislation. They can do, uh, they cannot do even in the lower house as well. And then, the, of course, opposition parties dominate uh, in the Senate. So this impact is not going to change uh, any, I mean, the people of Pakistan destiny, but uh, for political uh, move for the opposition, it's a good step, first step. And, they and for get political, you know, and as far as the political movement in the country is concerned, it's a huge, uh, you know, initiative that the gov the opposition has taken, you know, basically to demonstrate that, look, we have the numbers and we can uh, affect legislation, like you said. Yes, uh, they can. And of course, uh, it would continue by 2021. But uh, this is very unfortunate, both the opposition and the uh, the government is not uh, coming up uh, together on national interest issue to come up with uh, big legislation and to create any and impact forth, in the country. Right. And you know this back and forth uh, sort of uh, fighting between the opposition is certainly not healthy for the, 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 any kind of legislation that has to be passed for any serious legislation. Uh, you know, a, a, a continued or, or a joint move towards perhaps, you know, building up uh, different laws, Nation changing, building, changing reform. Laws because you know that there are many yeah. uh, sort of important legislation are pending with uh, the parliament. Right. You know that the military court extension and uh, right. some sort of acts on terrorism, amendment and many other things. But uh, the issue is that very, very important. Uh, it's responsibility of the government to bring opposition political parties uh, to develop consensus on very important legislation. Uh, but uh, still, you know that uh, the opposition and the government uh, uh, have been on odd on different uh, very important uh, issues. But uh, as you know that, uh, but so far uh, we were discussing about the leak video and the uh, accountability process. I don't think so that uh, the Senate election think... would create any impact. But it will. It. But but doesn't it do sort of the same thing as far as the pressure is concerned? It could. It Does could. it put it, the government on a back footing, for example? It could, because it could be the first step even. It has been around 11 months now that uh, opposition uh, were divided and uh, they tried to bring all parties conference uh, belong to opposition political parties, but they could not come up with some color. And they now decided to declare 25th July the Black Day uh, in, in the country history. But, uh, uh, I still have doubt that the opposition on different fronts uh, it, it does, does not seem united. But on this very forum, they, they signed the signature, they, they stand will. united uh, to change they, they uh, the top court in upper house of the parliament. Uh, right. They are united on this issue. And this could be the first step to pile up pressure on the government in upcoming... Uh, Do you think it can destabilize the government? It could not. At least, uh, is, uh, timing is very important in Pakistan politics. Right. And, at um, this point, I don't, you think, I don't think so that uh, at least uh, uh, there is any possibility in coming three, four, five, or six months that. Uh, uh, but ultimately, who is the loser here? Isn't it? Isn't it uh, the, the the people who voted for these public representatives, Shafiq Sab, to come in and and you know bring about changes to bring about legislation that impacts them? Yes, of course. I mean, the people are the loser. There was some expectation from the PTI government that they will bring some changes and they, their life and uh, will be a little bit on ease. They mm -hmm. will get justice in, from the court. They will get uh, something positive like the uh, economy. They will be happier. They will have a happier life. But An institutional reform. When we talk about Every institution. Every institution. Like the, the judiciary being one example now. Judiciary, education. Right. Like just to name it. There is, there is a need of reformation in every institution and 
I, I, my suggestion is very simple, like the opposition parties and the government, they should sit together and discuss for the people. But I mean, the, the problem is, well, the opposition parties want to be in the government at all costs, and the government parties, or those parties who are in the government, they want to remain in the government forever. Just so they are not thinking about the people. I mean, people are suffering. The middle class is the biggest sufferer. They are yeah. being pushed toward poverty. This alarming situation. But nobody is talking about the people. Nobody is talking. When we talk about, uh, you know, we talk about elections. We talk about, uh, we talk about supporting the government. We talk about being a healthy opposition. Isn't part of that being that you let, you know, we say that we've accepted the election results. Isn't that when you say you've accepted the election results, well, let the government work for the next five years? Or is it about constantly derailing uh, the, the process of legislation, the process of, you know, the government moving forth? Right, healthy criticism, of course, you know, we, we want the opposition to do that. But isn't, isn't, it, uh, isn't this taking things a little too far? I think uh, opposition is a very, very important uh, part of the democratic process. In any uh, democratic society, uh, you can't run the system without uh, the opposition's active participation right. in the business of the parliament and uh, even as a, as a kind of a watchdog uh, for the government's uh, actions. But unfortunately, in Pakistan, opposition has never been uh, working in the interest of the people of Pakistan. Uh, there are myriads of problems the people of Pakistan are facing today, uh, uh, high inflation rate, unemployment, uh, economic difficulties which people are facing, the burden of uh, fresh and new taxes, and so on and so forth. Though uh, I think these are unavoidable uh, kind of uh, situation. But opposition should have taken the platform of the parliament and should have uh, taken a stand over there. Not a single day when the debate was going on in the parliament, they have spoken about the interests of the people of Pakistan. Right. When you uh, when you discuss the budget, and I what think about the southern creating province? a rumpus uh, in the, in the parliament is not uh, the basic and primary task of the opposition. You should have taken point by point the main uh, the, the 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 main character of the budget. Uh, right. for 2019 and 20, and you should have told the people of uh, Pakistan what kind of alternative they have. Yes. If you criticize one policy or one budgetary yes. proposal of the government, you should be able to you present your own proposal and, you and how you can economy. improve the lot of the uh, right. uh, people right. of Pakistan, how you can improve the quality of life of the people of Pakistan. There's no they constructive have not, criticism have, uh, here. They didn't do that. Now coming uh, to this particular move, I think there should there shouldn't be any illusion that they are doing it for the for the interest of the people of Pakistan. They are just doing it for their own sake, just uh, trying to uh, to protect the dynasties in the main two uh, political opposition parties. And I think uh, this is in a very bad taste that at this particular juncture, when Pakistan is facing so many issues on external front, internal this, front, right. I, and it is uh, when we say that it is the responsibility of the government, how can you? I, I think it's a two-way street. You you can't blame the government all the time that they should be coming. Government should try, and there's no doubt. But at least the opposition's responsibility is to respond and reciprocate in the same manner. And we haven't seen that gesture on part of the opposition. Right. Even this particular issue, what are they going to do with it? Even if they change the what Senate chairman right, and exactly. they bring their own man, what will happen? What what will happen? I think that a lot of the people is not going to to change. The difficulties people are facing is not going to be uh, reduced as I well. I think an extension of that, Zaid Zab, what happened to issues like, uh, you know, uh, the southern province, for example. That was a huge issue in, in the elections. We saw a host of MNAs. And that has gone on the back burner. Uh, we, we saw a host of MNAs changing their parties, forming a block, and under that guise, they changed, they became a part of the, the government. And after that, we haven't seen any movement. We haven't seen any, any of that moving forward. Maruk, this is very interesting. In 2018 election, 43% are new faces in uh, National Assembly. 43%. Right. Right. And out of it, uh, around 79% uh, are sitting turn Right. They contested election uh, on a political party like Pakistan People's Party in 2013. And then after that, in 2018, they contested election on PTI ticket the ruling party, because they want it to be uh, on the, the primary bench, benches all the way. And it doesn't matter this, whether it's the southern uh, the province issue or it doesn't matter if there's any other issue. They will just form, use that as a platform to ascend into, into the government of the day or whichever party they feel will make the government. 
Um, uh, yes, of course. Uh, that's why the poor literacy rate, and particularly the South Punjab, around 98% uh, uh, of the public representative have been changing their loyalty. Does it matter to the people over there because they li live below the poverty line and they promised that they would come up with a new province in 100 days and they did nothing. And they, uh, and you know that after and five years, And there's a lot of back and forth movement also. You know, they, they, they have been switching parties. It's not new, you know, coming back and going back and forth. There's a lot of movement like that also. And there's no, you know, it, it's un, nobody cares and nobody seems to feel any sort of uh, qualms about, of, of, uh, about doing that. It's just politics. It's just politics and, uh, of course, uh, we were expecting that this government would come into power. Things would that, change. Uh, there would be a uh, Pakistan like that and things would get changed with 43% uh, are new faces in the parliament. But we did not see so far uh, any big change that, uh, you know, that the first budget uh, was passed by the parliament. Uh, th this was a uh, sort of poor participation and very little uh, legislatures or the MPs uh, came up with their... Uh, they either uh, want to defend their uh, leaders or, uh, or they want to create amendment. a ruckus in the parliament, which is what's been happening, And of course, and uh, there was a new debate in that, uh, you know, that many uh, parliamentarians are behind the bar and they were just uh, taking... Uh, the farmer to get into the parliament and uh, discuss very important issue and right. to, uh, even they were participating into the proceedings of the parliamentary committees. Right. But uh, uh, this is a very important thing, you know, Pakistan was facing and the new government and the new challenge. It's true that, uh, by the way, it's very, very true that to run Pakistan affairs is a very tough job as PTI, the ruling party, was expecting before 2018. Right. But uh, a lot of challenges, new economic challenges, and the IMF deal, and the bringing up a sort of uh, aid from different uh, friendly countries, and uh, challenges uh, to the projects going on, uh, linked to, you know, CPAC, and countless challenges. But, but after that, government successfully got the budget passed right now, uh, we were hoping that uh, it could now take off after 11 long months. But, but this does take a lot of, I mean, this is of course a lot of this, this fighting, these movements to de-seat the chairman, the deputy chairman, it takes away from, from the actual role of, of that the parliamentarians should be engaged in at this point. Certainly it's not illegal. But, I mean, the purpose behind it seems to be crystal clear, which is what everybody knows. It's basically government job to do it all to get it done, but government was, you know, still looks like that is still sitting on the Do you think government should have been able to placate them somehow? Or, or do you think that it has more to do with the accountability process, which of course they don't want to compromise on? Accountability process has, you know, uh, it has been a, a very hot uh, topic for the country in, during the past, uh, around after Panama. You know, mm. well, we have been debating this issue since 2016, then we were hoping that the accountability started from the top, the mm -hmm. then sitting prime minister, and uh, there would be a fair, across the board accountability. Uh, either it's offshore, either the tax evasion, or many other issues, but we are still knowing and looking that only uh, those legislature are the leaders who belong to opposition political parties never fastly tracking against them. Right. But uh, when as it comes to the government, uh, right. it seems to be just very slow. But I as far know. as the accountability process is concerned, when we talk about accountability, of course, you know, Shafiq Saab, there has been a lot of talk about accountability. The government did it. The government started from the point go, they said accountability, accountability. But now, after this, this uh, Arshad Malik, uh, uh, Judge Arshad Malik's affidavit, that has come out after the videos, for me, that I think is a more important issue because it seems to indicate that there are such huge institutional problems in our country at this point that everything else seems to, you know, at least pale in comparison. For example, judiciary, you know, we talk about accountability. How can there be accountability when your judiciary itself is, is, is the way it is? And unfortunately, this, it's, it's this really affidavit unfortunate. seems to... It's really unfortunate. And as what Jadun Sahib said about the timing, uh, Maryam Nawaz has selected a very good time. They are putting more pressure on the government and the on the judiciary. Right. Uh, judiciary has taken the step like first removed without forensic um, 
I mean, uh, going into the detail, like properly investigating the matter. Why uh, have they removed? I mean, does it, isn't it, like I you're mean, saying, it's pretty much... But, but you know, there is the confession. When he said that I met uh, former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif after... Uh, the judgment. After the judgment. Right. So it is really embarrassing. Like, like there, sh there must be thorough investigation into the matter. Like what now Judge Saab is claiming, Malik Arshad, it need to be investigated because still he is claiming. So why to trust him anymore? Because if he got an offer from a, a man from the Nawaz Sharif Sahab, why he did not inform the government? Why he did not inform the higher uh, judiciary? There's of course, of course that matter of I mean, the incrimi it, incriminating, embarrassing video that he talks of about. Of course. So, so when, uh, when this video leaked, so then you are explaining the situation. So, I mean, now you, whatever you are saying, and it's, it is it's, a claim. Right, and it's after, you're it's, giving you're giving this explanation after a video has come out from the other side. From the other side. So, so that's so very important also. I mean, what what is my understanding, it needs to be thoroughly investigated if he say that he got an offer. So why not to see whether he received, got the offer or not? Whom, who gave the offer? Like he is also the culprit, by the way. But it indicates, of course, but it indicates for me, for you, and I think for the man you know the person who goes to kacheri every day oh. for for you know his his uh, issues right. for for uh, justice yes. for him it indicates you know mia mohammad nawaz sharif the former prime minister of pakistan th three times pm at the behest of this judicial system whether he is guilty or whether uh, you know arshad malik saab is guilty it shows that there is a very deep problem within our system which is exploited is. Yes. and in his position Think about it from a person who, he, who, who has gotten an, a, you know, a wrong FIR registered against him, a wrong criminal case registered against him. For that person, being at the behest of this very system every day, ji Javed sab, how will we change that? That's, that's, it's a very, very sad day, I think, for, for all those claimants you know, who are at the behest of this I system. I think that's an extremely important point you have raised. Uh, basically, if we look at the whole situation, I think it is uh, such a hugely important issue for Pakistan. And uh, the kind of attention or the kind of, uh, uh, I think, it deserved uh, from all the stakeholders was not given uh, to the, uh, this particular issue because everybody is trying to put it under the carpet. But I think uh, you can't wish things away. Uh, first of all, I think uh, uh, the uh, forensic examination is, a, uh, is a primarily needed and it should be done. Secondly, if the gentleman is incriminated and he right. is found to be involved, it is not, I think, simply, uh, it's not enough to remove him from the post, but in fact, uh, the judiciary should take the Supreme Court of Pakistan or the Islamabad High Court or his parent department, the Lahore High Court, they should come forward and they should initiate uh, the uh, proceedings against uh, these judge so that uh, the, the, the whole uh, the, the shadow which has been cast on the on the uh, the, the judgment being uh, given uh, to mr uh, nawaz sharif because nawaz sharif is not only the supreme leader of the political party but three time prime minister of the country as right. well if the judgment was correct i think it should be cleared if the judgment was not correct and it was given under pressure or duress, I think this, that should also be cleared. And the two main important things should be discussed by any examiner, uh, any uh, forensic expert, whether the, 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 uh, the particular video is uh, doctored or not. If the video is not doctored, I think then it, it requires the judiciary to come forward and take uh, any action which is required under the law. Even if the video is, for but example, not doctored. I think Maruk uh, asking the government to take the initiative or the step forward would be a little unjustified. It is not up to the government that right. there are two uh, parties to the whole situation. One party is the Nawaz Sharif and his family and the other mm -hmm. party is the judiciary. Right. So why should government take an initiative in this regard? And government has taken a very correct, very right step, uh, staying away from the whole issue. But we have, um, you know, let's leave the government out of it. But we have unfortunately, you know, even in the past, we, the former CJs, for example, we've had a lot of, you know, we've had a lot of suo motos in different uh, you know, time periods, and we've had, you know, a lot of justice being de being meted out. I'm not saying that anything wrong was was done there, but as far as the institution of judiciary is concerned, there has been no 
concrete reform. We haven't seen the judiciary clean its own house. And there are a lot of issues as far as, you know, this is just one, like I said, it highlights the issue, yes, but it's not something that doesn't happen every day. It's not something that doesn't happen to, you know, on a very basic level, on, on a very, you know, session court, district court, on a very basic level to anybody out there. Isn't that true, Zaid Sab? Does it not? It can, ha it ha it can happen to you and me every day. And there are instances when, unfortunately, the judges even do take money and then, you know, they, there's nothing a person can do about it. And there Mountful. are people who believe the corruption in that system itself is right there. Oh, Mark, this is a very, very important. You know, after 2016 and 17, we have been discussing this case, a test case uh, right. in Pakistan judicial history where the two million plus cases are still pending with different courts. A huge backlog and pendency and uh, we uh, were hoping uh, the, when the Chief Justice Kosa took over and the model courts also introduced in the country and this case was very very important but uh, when this video uh, this situation and this scam came out purportedly that it was the biggest problem started not with with Wimper but with a bank I'm telling you in the judiciary it raises a uh, serious questions over our fair judicial system to provide justice. And at a time when, when new judges are being nominated for the High Court also, these things need to be looked at, their records need to be checked before they can be appointed on, on such high posts. Such high posts and uh, either though uh, they are right person for the right job. Right. Because... Have they been honest? I mean, if, when we talk about, Zaid when we talk about living beyond means, why don't we give, we give the judiciary to that same test? Why don't we ask them, are they living? I mean, I mean, we need to investigate this issue, to, to go further with this, if we want there to be justice in this country and accountability, because they're both two sides of the same coin. Uh, of course it is, and uh, you know, uh, we also question the accountability process, it's uh, laws as well, and you know, this is very important. Now, under the proceeding of the top court of the country, they yes, are going politicians, to take up uh, yes, this very, very are, important issue on are, are, you know, Zaid Sahib, you tell me, you know, in your opinion, what, what class of people is the most maligned, in your opinion? Let's, let's be honest. Who do we question? I mean, I mean, there's no two qualms about it. Who is it that we question, uh, you know, from the point go, as far as corruption is concerned, as far as their, you know, their, their conduct is concerned? Look, it's a very difficult question you ask even to Jadun Sahib. <laughs> you will not be able, because if we talk about that, that the angels are sitting in the health department, we, it will be lying, by the way, because we know how they are handling the doctors, like the, the, the drug mafia, the, the pharmaceutical mafia, the way they are uh, giving packages to the doctors to go abroad on the summer vacation, so we know something going wrong. If we say you know, police is police are uh, uh, not doing well, right. so I mean every institutions, every right. institutions, there are problems, and we have to change. We have to make some changes in the system, which unfortunately is not uh, being done by the government because of the strong opposition. We know that a lot of things are going on from the opposition side. So there is no reformation currently, and uh, but how will we do accountability if we don't, you know, if, if there's if the justice system isn't overhauled? Of course, we we have to, we have to, because this is the if you're if we are not getting justice, it means that uh, the society will remain the same. There will be corruption, and there will be uh, criminals who will be handling everything. We know that there will be goons who will be uh, roaming around and freely, like who can do whatever they want to do. So because there is no justice system, but you know, there are good people in the judiciary, we cannot yes, say. Yes, I'm this sure. Is, this is just one incident. They are very but, but, competent, but, but, but it, does, it does indicate a larger problem. Yes, of course, there is a larger problem. Like, the, the, I mean, they, they should starting uh, accountability of judiciary from Malakayum, by the way. Yes. When the tape was leaked. Which, which yes. Conversation yes. between the, yes. the, the then Chief Minister Shehbaz Sharif Saab and Justice uh, Did Malakayum. Did that happen? Nothing. So I mean, that is why we are asking the government, if the government is listening to us, so please go deeper into this case and you should set a precedent like to, uh, to complete the investigation, what exactly has been done. Like, first of all, uh, he has admitted something like his relationship with Nasser, but who is a known uh, political uh, affiliation with, uh, with PMLN, so why he met him, 
what are the relationship between the two like Javed sir what let me go to Javed sir Javed sir in your opinion uh, what does the affidavit definitely tell us that he met with uh, the, he uh, says Maruf, that he met uh, with the former Maruf, prime minister uh, uh, yes before i answered uh, this particular Jee. question uh, the the point you raised earlier was that uh, which section of the society or segment of the society is the most maligned in Pakistan. Right. I think uh, realistically speaking, when you uh, take the whole society right. and the society suffers from structural problems, you can't take one particular segment of the society or one particular class uh, to uh, sort of uh, put a blame on right. and you accuse them for being most corrupt or otherwise. Uh, if you look at the system we inherited and the system we have not been able to change over the time period, every government, I think, including uh, uh, the current uh, sitting uh, government, which is definitely now working on structural reforms, yeah. uh, Marak, no government paid any heed, any attention to structural reforms in our uh, society, in our country. When you don't, when the modern nation states have done that, it's not the rocket science we can't understand. You look around every 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 state in the region or beyond, you would see that modern uh, nation states have evolved and they have developed uh, so much internal mechanisms and checks and balances that it's extremely difficult for any person, any segment of the society to go for institutional corruption. Uh, individual cases are everywhere, even in America or in, in European uh, countries as well. But as far as these, the institutional problems are concerned, they have uh, definitely addressed them. And now coming to Pakistan, I think unfortunately we have not been able to do that. And of course uh, there's not that kind of support so, from the opposition. Uh, so the answer to your question was, there. you can't take out any, any particular individual, any particular section or segment of the society to, to blame for the, uh, the problems which Pakistan is facing But today. unfortunately a section of society is blamed for all problems, don't well, you? I think, think uh, at different times the other sections are also blamed. Like we are talking about the judiciary right now and there are opinions that we need to reform the judiciary as well. Reforms are needed over there. We are talking about the corrupt practices in the judiciary have, as right. well, and that has which is not a sacred cow. No. I think no segment of the society is a sacred, sacred cow in cow, Pakistan. Yes. We can talk about that, but the problem here is, uh, my issue is that without uh, forensic examination, it is very unnatural uh, to put a blame on any particular party. I think it is very strange that some, something should have been done. Right. It's not the government. I think it is the responsibility of the, the judiciary, judiciary itself. itself. Right. Why can't they do that? You go for the forensic, then we can blame the gentleman or the otherwise. Now the problem is the shadow has been cast over the decision handed down to Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Right. But for affirmative, we do not know that whether the case was fixed or not. Right. I think it would be extremely unfair to the judge as well because we can't become jury, judge and executioner. I, we, we need to understand that uh, in, modern, uh, in any modern society, I think forensic is not something which is a rocket science or a nuclear science. We should have conducted it much earlier and I think it would have been very easy to understand uh, whom to blame. And now you coming can, to your, uh, mm -hmm. your, your point which you raised or your question you raised mm -hmm. that uh, the affidavit. Uh, I think affidavit uh, uh, to me looked like uh, covering his tracks. I, I don't know because as I am pointing out and stressing that without, without uh, forensic examination it would is be very unfair. For, 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 is, it, is it natural for, he him, uh, for him to have uh, gone and, he has and not, had a meeting? He has not denied presence. the meeting itself. He has accepted it. He has accepted that. So, so if he that has meeting, denied the content. content. He said that the, maybe, I think uh, if I'm correct, he said that it was doctored or it was misrepresented. He said he hasn't denied the meeting that ha the video shows. He hasn't, and he's also further said that he met with former Prime Minister at Jati Umrah. So for him to have sought that, not even, if it's not sought, if, you know, to have had that meeting, it, it's unnatural, some, at least. Something wrong, but yes. the only resolution uh, can it's be found in uh, forensic examination. And I think the sooner the better to clear the air. And if he's responsible, he should be punished as well. He should but, be penalized but like for that. Accepting meeting the, 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 the prime minister who has, uh, I mean, who the judge has awarded uh, the, the judgment. So, I mean, this is really unnatural. Unnatural. It mean, there is something wrong that needed to be that, that needs to, to be, be in, further investigated, investigated at least. Wrong. Yes, right. Yes. Unfortunately, he, he seems to be covering his tracks. Unfortunately, uh, that's uh, all. Prime, prime of his. All the time that we have. Thank you so much for joining us today, Shafiq Ahmed Saab. Thank you for your time, Javed Jadun Saab. Thank you for being with us today. As far as our our country is concerned.
the issue of of judge arshad malik unfortunately highlights or indicates a larger problem within our judicial system that needs to be addressed whether it this video incriminates him or whether it finds uh, it incriminates uh, the other party the main issue for for the people of pakistan and of course for justice is that the problems within our judicial system be looked into be addressed by uh, you know perhaps judicial reform which the government has been saying also and and we've all uh, you know has have been have been saying that it needs to be done but somehow we haven't gotten around to uh, till till today unfortunately thank you so much for joining us today on perspective